My name is David Eidlitz, and here's my story. I am the sole survivor of two families that were murdered during the Holocaust. My father's family was ultra-Orthodox, but because of my father's experiences during the war, um, he couldn't rectify his experience with his background. Therefore, I was raised totally secular. Uh, my wife and I, whose father also was a survivor of Auschwitz, uh, moved to Port Washington about 23, 24 years ago. And we're driving down Main Street, and there was a sign serving saying that uh, if you come to Chabad, they'll serve you ice cream. And because of that sign, my wife said, let's go there. Before Shavuos, we used to put these big signs across Main Street, come for the ice cream party, and that's maybe what brought him in. As you can see, he's a highly intelligent, educated person. But in terms of Yiddishkeit, he knew nothing. He's one of the very few Jews that I've met over the years that never had a bar mitzvah. And uh, he would love to talk and study and come to a shir. On a Saturday night, I was fast asleep. And I was in a, not a dreamlike state, but I was not in a wake state. And I was hit by a flash of light. And when I looked, I could see that it was the presence of the Rebbe who I could not look at because the light was shining in my eyes and I couldn't look at him. And all he did was to let me see his blue eyes. And he said that if I want to have the life that I want to lead, I have to perform mitzvahs 9 through 13. I then received the biggest chill that I ever had in my life. But of course, growing up totally secular, I had no idea what this meant. And one morning, I remember it like yesterday, it's about 20 years ago, he comes running into shul. And I never see him in shul in the morning. He doesn't come to shul. I said, David, what are you doing here? And he says, Rabbi, do mitzvahs have numbers? So I said, of course, mitzvahs have numbers. He said, it's a strange thing. The Rebbe came to me in a dream, and he told me that I should keep mitzvahs 9 through 13. And it was very strange to me because I never knew that there's more than 10 commandments. And I said, well, you're probably going to think I'm crazy but I had a dream about the Rebbe. And he said, okay. And I said, yeah, but it wasn't a dream. It wasn't a dream where he said, let's have lunch, let's go to a Met game. He was very specific with me. And the Rabbi said, well, what did he say? And he said, well, he told me that if I wanna have, I wanna lead the life that I wanna have, I have to perform mitzvahs nine through 13. And we, we went and looked in the Rambam, Sefer mitzvahs, and nine through 13 is Tfil and Shayad, Tfil and Sharosh, Krishma, Talmud Teda, and Kiddush Hashem. The next day, Rabbi Paltiel calls me and says, um, were you kidding about that dream? And I said, no, I was not. He goes, you know, the question that secular Jews, the, the question that most secular Jews would ask the Rebbe is, how do we become, how do we get more Yiddishkeit? How do we become more Jewish? And the Rebbe would answer, you need to study Torah, you need to announce the presence of God, you need to put on tevillin. He says, those happen to be mitzvahs 9 through 13. He says, you know, obviously the, the Rebbe's trying to talk to you, and he suggested that we go to see the, the Rebbe's grave. And at this point, I'm figuring, I have no idea what's going on here, but you know what, maybe not a bad idea. So that was on a Monday, on a Friday morning, the Rabbi and I go to the Rebbe's grave, and we're sitting in that cabin, and Rabbi Paltiel said, all right, write the Rebbe a note. And I'm saying, ha, 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 what should I write? And he goes, you'll know. I'm going to leave you. Sit here. You'll know what to write. So I sat there for a couple of minutes, and then it hit me. My father's family, my mother's family, my father-in-law's family, all these people who are wherever they may be, who just left this face of the earth unacknowledged, there's no plots, there's no tombstones, there's no memorials. They were here one day and then they left with no memory and it's up to me to retain their memory for them. In all the years on Shlichus, I've never had somebody who was not so involved to get a message directly from the Rebbe. I said, what's the merit that the Rebbe came to you? And my personal theory is that he, once mentioned that his name is Eidlitz, and he believes that he's a direct descendant, Ben Achaben, from the Marsha. So perhaps that's the schus that he had such an uh, inspiration direct from the Rebbe.